The Senate Banking Committee just got done grilling Dave Marcus, who is Facebook's uh, official head of Calibra. He stood his ground against the slings and arrows of the senators, who seemed, from my estimation, having just got done watching the live stream, uh, to try and hurl as much as mud as humanly possible at Facebook. It's almost like watching, it's like watching someone I know who is really corrupt lecturing somebody who I also know is corrupt about corruption. It's, it's like, a, like a corruption inception kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Bitcoin decided it, it didn't like the look of the neighborhood at 11,000, uh, and it decided to return to the comfy suburbs of 10, th- wait, no, 9, 9.9, 9.6. Oh yeah, we're going down. All right, guys, we're going to break it all down in today's exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin. Welcome to Breaking Bitcoin, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We are recording live Tuesday, July 16th, 2019. And of course, this is your daily source for market updates, sentiment, and news for traders. I am your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today, whether you're watching us from across YouTube, Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, or on Roku with the Investor News app. If you guys want to support the stream, make sure to like, follow, share, subscribe, and engage in the live chat. Now, this episode of Breaking Bitcoin is brought to you by us. If you are a new trader, an aspiring trader, or an experienced trader looking for a community of actual professionals to help you sharpen your skills, check out all that we have to offer over at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Our education focuses on technical strategy, risk management, capital preservation and growth, automation, statistical analysis, and lifestyle coaching. Whatever your opinion about trading or groups of traders, our community is there to help you grow. I love spending every day in the group, guys. You guys are working so hard. Just kind of a personal shout out to the guys in the group too as well. I've seen your guys' teamwork. I'm seeing all your individual work and I'm I'm it's just awesome to be involved in a community like that. So if you guys want to join up, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com to sharpen your skills today. Now, a couple premium trading group updates did some huge updates to Quadrigo ATR, the indicator that all of us in the group use on a daily basis. Uh, Again, there were a lot, just a huge quality of life update and added features as well. So a new feature to uh, discriminate against outliers A new feature to, nice, I just had my, good. Uh, A new feature to discriminate against outliers uh, so that we can actually get a better ATR value uh, when we're looking at our stop and target system. I added, uh, I just just cleaned up the code. I refactored the code, made everything smoother, cleaner, added features as well, just to improve our quality of life. Put the QPS position size calculator in there as well and fixed a slight bug that some individuals were having. Then I went back and also fixed the original QPS and changed it. So now that that it works well for mobile trading. So if you're in the group, I know a lot of us are trading mobily uh, because we're out and about when it's time to do our daily scan. That's absolutely fine. You can do, you can trade the way that we trade every single day for 30 minutes from the driver's seat of your car park before you trade no trading and driving all right no trading and driving no no ipads strapped to your steering wheel Uh, but anyways uh bullseye i'm feeling great man i'm feeling really really good this morning it's a good day uh just had uh some maintenance guys leave my house getting a whole lot of work done on my house just kind of like seasonal updates and stuff and look at this this is a new microphone this is a new microphone and this is a go xlr now I don't have it all figured out yet, and I swear I am not going to play around too much with the, uh, you know, settings on this thing. Right, that's right. If I curse, I can now beat myself. But uh, it is the Go XLR. It does have a lot of cool things, funny stuff, you know, like for example, this thing and this thing and this thing. So just a lot of like cool little features that uh, that we got here. So, anyways. Let's slide on over into the live scene. We've got a whole lot to talk about. You guys don't want to look at my face. You guys want to look at the markets and you guys want to know what I think about them. And we're going to talk a whole lot today about what Steve Mnuchin said yesterday about cryptocurrency and why I actually think it's good fundamentally for Bitcoin. We're also going to be talking about uh, we're also going to be talking about Dave Marcus's stance uh, in trial, not trial, but uh, hearing today at the Senate Banking Committee. All right, guys, so let's get right into this. Wow, things are doing quite well. Uh, And uh, let's switch over to the live scene. Laptop on my passenger seat, though, man. Also, hey, guys, before we begin hardcore today, I want to give a big 
Big shout out to, and I'm not going to mention him by name unless he gives me the clear distinction that he's okay with me personally pointing him out on stream. Some people are want to maintain their privacy, and that's absolutely fine. But one of our staff members has a birthday today. Now, just a personal shout out. This person has greatly improved the quality of my life. Uh, it's been, you know, it's really hard to meet somebody really close that you trust, that you're able to kind of go through the trenches with, that you're able to have good days and bad days with. This person has been with me since the 2017 bull run since the 2018 bear market, since the 2019 beginning. We don't know whether Bitcoin's price is going up or down to 1K or up to 19,000. Nobody knows. Everybody, all the friends have bailed. All your homies have jumped out of the car. And yet, several remained, but this one in particular. So huge shout out to you, my friend. You are one of the best human beings that I know. It is an honor to be your friend. It is an honor to know you on a daily basis. And thank you so much for all that you do, improving my life and being the quality of a human being that you are and the quality of a friend that you are, my good friend. Okay, so, oh boy, next up, bad lip reading of Justin. Uh, a bad, <laughs> bad lip reading of Justin video. All right, um, okay. Uh, so yesterday's video, we're gonna start by giving away some crypto as we always do. So we'll randomly pick a winner. Uh, yesterday's video was Binance Margin Trading wrecks Bitcoin's price and Ethereum to adopt Bitcoin Cash. Make sure you go see yesterday's video. We talked about how uh, Vitalik Buterin actually is publicly uh, promoting the idea that Ethereum is not going to be able to be stable. Ethereum 1.0 is not going to be able to maintain and scale at its current rate, uh, that they're going to have to dump their data state onto another chain. Not that they're going to have to, but that it's just a good option. And they've listed Bitcoin Cash as their primary one and Ethereum Classic as another potential option with another commenter actually bringing up steam so go check that out i link the article i talk about it timestamps in the description as always and double think man double think is the winner of the crypto comment giveaway he says hey justin what's your opinion uh <laughs> what's your opinion on haikanashi candles and when to use them and also using indicators with those as opposed to regular candles double think thank you so much for the support my good friend if you get a hold of me in the discord at justin wise 5696 i will tip you some crypto bitcoin currently 9575 swear to god i'm gonna get there a little bit of a buyback right now and a lot of liquidations but we got to get through the regular stuff first guys patience is a virtue now uh to answer your question do i think haikanashi candles are really good yes in fact haikanashi trend is one of the was one of the impetuses is one of the underlying code factors in time transformation, which was my primary indicator before I made the switch to Minx. Okay, now I'm currently working on about seven different versions of Minx and stress testing them across multiple things. You know, it's kind of crazy that when you start designing indicators and your own strategies of trading, I'll just be taking a walk down the street with my daughter like we do every night when she, uh, you know, when she gets home, we go for a walk. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think this is my time to think. And we talk back and forth and it's just a good opportunity for me to ask her about her day. And she asks me about my day and she listens to all my nerd stuff. And it's a good opportunity just for my mind to work very well. And often good ideas come to me and then I can talk them out. Um, and again, the, I'm not a fantastic programmer when it comes to regular programming languages, but I'm, I'm pretty sharp tool when it comes to Pine, uh, and other strategy related concepts. And really it's the algorithm of, of strategy building, right? Uh, because if you can write it out on paper, you can write it into Pine, you can write it into Python. And that's actually how my, um, I wouldn't say he's a mentor, but the individual that influenced me heavily upon writing script taught me, he said, Hey man, don't worry about the syntax just write out literally the words of what you want to occur. Like, uh, I want line one to cross line two. And when line two crosses line one, I want this signal. And line two is going to be exponential moving average nine and line three, you know, and so on. So like actually write out the words of what it is that you want the script or the function to do. And then once you have it written out, once you've written out your little novella, then you just go in and research the syntax and you make it all work. And then if that doesn't work, then you try different parameters. You try moving this around. You know, did you have an indentation error? You know, move this around a little bit, copy, paste, copy, paste, and move this up and down a little bit. And there you go. That's how it, that's how, uh, that's how, to me, that's how good programming is born. And then you just get better at understanding the syntax. So you can just go directly from brain to syntax. But I always find it really, really helpful uh, to write out in words what it is you want your code to do. So uh, how does that relate to Haikonashi? I think Haikonashi is fantastic. I think that Haikonashi is going to get you into a trend a little too late. It uh, depends on your time frame. Depends on your time frame. Uh, in my experience, the reason why I moved away from time transformation is because I found that using the using Minx and other initiators are going to give me a better trending indication to the upside. But I will say this, Haikonashi can be a very good confirmation indicator. It can also be a very good exit indicator. And it's not a bad initiator. Uh, now, as far as using indicators for Haikonashi, keep in mind that Haikonashi is going to be OHLC4. 
so they're going to skew the mathematics of your indicators uh and as with all things in my personal opinion i don't really like most indicators on ohlc4 uh hl2 works really really good but often in cryptocurrency with bitcoin in particular close works the best i think with most strategies with most indicators so back test back test back test back test back test and find what's going to work the best for you i think that if you are checking out ohlc4 combinations with indicators you're a pioneer man same with renko charts so so keep pushing forward man and test 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 okay um over to the live scene obviously bitcoin making a big move down trading below the 55 exponential moving average if we just backtracked yesterday's show you guys know me i'm a humble individual i'm never going to come on here and say i told you so but i did tell you so so i'm sorry backtrack on that a little bit uh but yesterday we were looking at the charts i said that i am not going to be moving into a long position ptp minx in combination with water tar explosion uh signaling for the short signal over here on the 13th of july 2019 failure of our lord and on the close of that candle, we did close below the baseline. We were holding up against secondary support here, excuse me, with our tertiary baseline, but we just closed completely below that on this down candle. We had one big buyback candle following the Mnuchin pump yesterday. So almost directly after that press conference ended, uh, price started pumping up to the upside. It actually started just a little bit before and actually during. Uh, but anyways, coming right up to our tertiary baseline and rejecting. So yesterday I talked about the two areas of interest being our primary baseline, as always looking for that reversal baseline bounce and our tertiary baseline, which actually was our, our area of initiation uh, yesterday. As we can see, price coming up right to the vicinity of the tertiary baseline, uh, actually coming up and tapping it on today's open and then dropping it to the downside. So uh, again, as I said yesterday, the trade is to the downside. Uh, as I said last night to the group, I said that we did get a four hour long signal right at the top. And what was it? It was another bad signal against the dominant trend. Again, you don't want to be trading against the daily time frame nine out of 10 times. And when you are, you want to be using a lower level of risk. I talked about how there was a four hour long signal. I talked about how I'm not going to take it because I think the price is more than likely to range than actually appreciate to the upside. And what do we get? We get a four hour short signal, two candles later, eight hours following that, which is fine. You just flip positions, take the correct trend because now that is an L a meso time frame signal in the direction of the daily trend. And you take that trade to the downside and you would be doing quite well right now. So I maintained my short, as I said last night, fully hedged, not sitting in Bitcoin long whatsoever. Remaining short from my initial short entry uh, across XBTZ19, BTC USD on Bybit, also short on Ethereum USD, also short on Ethereum USD over there as well. So, uh, you know, and, and again, as I said last night, far more heavily skewed. I wouldn't say far more. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but what, but but significantly more heavily skewed to downside risk, i.e. meaning I am more short than I need to be hedged, i.e. I am profiting off the moves to the downside. Now, uh, keep in mind something that I do want to say right up, and I don't see this. And the reason why I do the show is, of course, to educate people on things that they otherwise would not no normally know. Uh, when you are shorting on an inverse futures contract, keep in mind that if you... It, you have to ask yourself whether you want to maximize your BTC return or whether you want to maximize your USD because you can try and go for both. But when it comes to shorting on inverse futures contracts like BTC USD on Bybit or XBT or any of the Bitcoin contracts on um, BitMEX or whether you're uh, doing anything on Deribit, any of those three exchanges, anything that is an inverse futures contract. Uh, you're already 1x long on Bitcoin. You're already holding the underlying asset. So just by holding Bitcoin, you are 1x long. And that is going to be your deposit onto these exchanges. So to be sitting in cash and to be neutral, you actually need to be short, which is why, for example, if you put, uh, let's say you have $5,000 in the market, uh, it's not, again, this is going to be a very, most people just don't take the time to learn this. If you have $5,000 in the market and you want to be like a traditional trader, meaning you just want to be flat if you're not in a trade, well, then you go over to the farthest out Bitcoin perpetual expiration date. So in this case, XBT Z19, uh, which expires in December, I believe. Uh, I know the U19 expires in September. Uh, yeah, December, the, the December 27th, so the December 27th contract, excuse me. Um, and uh, you just go short however many contracts you have and the dollar value of what you have long. And even though you will be losing crypto, should price move up, you will not lose dollar value. So uh, anyways, um, so that is one way to be flat. And often you can get very, very good results when price is uncertain by hedging your bets. So for example, uh, say you want to uh, say you want to go long, but you're just uncertain. You don't have a very strong signal. You want to apply a little bit of discretion. Well, you can put on a few less contracts to the short side over on that Z19 contract, right? 
and essentially remain flat. Because keep in mind that if you're short and then you go long, you're not really making any money. You have to actually go long. You have to reduce your short. But the reason why I bring this out, the main thing is when you do want to go short, if you just put on a, sh let's say you have, um, let's say you have $5,000 in the market. And uh, let's let's bring up this candle. Let's say you went five. Let's say you went short five thousand contracts right at the top of this candle. You haven't made any money. Uh, you haven't made any USD value. You've made crypto, but that crypto is worth less because you you have only made enough crypto to compensate for the declining value against the dollar of your position, right? And if your position was for your entire stack, for your entire equity, for your entire capital balance, uh, then you haven't made any dollars. So to actually make dollars, you need to take on a position in addition to your to your um, capital balance. So again, if you have $5,000 in Bitcoin on BitMEX or Bybit or wherever, wherever, I'm just talking about how you actually make money on a short and dollar value, uh, you need to put on 5,000 contracts short and then whatever your position size is. So if you're going to put on, you know, $750 to the downside, you need to buy 5,750 contracts or sell, short sell 5,750 contracts. And then you only take profit on the $750. Now you are going to have to rebalance so, for example, because when that trade is successfully concluded, you're going to have more dollars than you began. So you're going to have to uh, sell an additional number of contracts to bring you up to hedge your entire balance. Because remember, if you are one X short, meaning short the number of contracts that you own on any perpetual swap or on any futures con uh, contract with a perpetual swap like BTC USD on Bybit or XBT USD on um, BitMEX, for example, you are going to be paying a funding rate every eight hours. Now, again, if you're short, hedged and prices going up, you're actually making money because you're getting the funding rate. But again, I digress. So those just little nuances of how to hedge up your position and how to actually be safe in the market is something that, you, again, most people just don't do. Most people just think it's as simple as, oh, I just go long or I go short. No, you have to do extra stuff if you want to go short because you're already holding Bitcoin in the first place. So you have to add to your, you have to add to your position. Anyways, um, uh, let me know how you guys think of my microphone. I hope it sounds really good. Uh, I do hope it sounds good. Um, I, I promise that I'm not going to play around too much with the voice effects. Uh, and if uh, if I look like I'm uh, if I'm look if I look like I'm John McAfee this morning, it's because it's really really hot in here and I'm kind of amped up. It's like super, super hot. I mean, it's ridiculous hot in here in my office right now. Oh, I know why. Because I have not turned the air conditioner back on after the maintenance people were here. So uh, just goes to show you uh, when you stare at the charts too long and when you research the news too much and when you look at when you look at uh, everything that's going on, you have a tendency to ignore sometimes real world things, which is absolutely fine if it's turning the air conditioner back on because I can live. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You know, I do need to tweak it. I watched a brief tutorial last night on how to adjust the audio settings. I'm not going to do it live on the stream, maybe one of these days. Uh, and I still have to figure out how to adjust the music from the slider panel. But this is awesome. This Go XLR is, is really, really cool. Uh, and I think this is a good opportunity for me. Get a fan, dude. Yeah. And then it would sound terrible in here. Have you ever heard a fan on an XLR microphone? Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to thank Jan Silva, Joseph, uh, Mr. Lawrence and uh, Monir and Club Lights, thank you guys so much for joining the community over there on YouTube. And Agent Kills, thank you so much for joining us over on Twitch. Okay, so uh, let's get, uh, we just rant and talk and talk and talk and talk on here. So let's get into some technical analysis. So on the daily, we rejected off of our tertiary baseline, the 21 exponential moving average, and we are currently trading below the 55 exponential moving average. Uh, closing below the 55 exponential moving average means, and, and again, we were below the baseline. So by all rights, we've been in a no long situation for a while unless you're using discretion. There will be no allowed longs coming off of this situation until price resolves, until we are back in, in an established dominant trend. There is going to be no positional long to take, right? Uh, now, obviously, individuals are going to be trained with the education that's out there that they need to, you know, arbitrarily set price targets and accumulate at certain prices or this. And again, I swear to God, um, this is a public service announcement. If anybody sends me... <laughs> This is a joke. I hope you guys know I'm not super serious, but I just mean this. I, uh, I get uh, screenshots and DMs every day from people. Not every day. Uh, this does happen kind of frequently with me, though. I get, you know, people are gonna be, uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna see these tweets or you know, like like signal groups publish these like these these like you know these these altcoin trades or whatever, and they always say the same thing, man. They always say the same like nonsense trading stuff. 
I'm accumulating between this price and this price, and my target is this price. Okay. Check the track records of these people, all right? Man, uh, that again, that word has that word has uh, evidence in in the stock market where you can accumulate a stock at a certain value price because you can do some fundamental analysis and determine, OK, what's the P.E. ratio of this company? Uh, what are their earnings reports this year? What is the analyst expected returns next year? What are they paying on dividends? What is the value of it? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, have they cut their dividend? Are they increasing their dividend? Things like uh, things like this, for example. Um, and uh, but but the idea of, uh, of accumulating um, at a certain altcoin price is extremely arbitrary, is extremely arbitrary. Again, I don't know of any better metric to trade the markets than to follow the direction of the dominant trend. So when altcoins are trending, they're fantastic buys. And when they're trending to the downside, you don't buy them um, now. That's a scam. Uh, Theo C says, do I have a stash of crypto for the long term that I never, ever touch? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, I do. I am a Bitcoin and small cryptocurrency investor. Um, again, I'm going to say that overwhelmingly, like to the point where it's almost not even worth talking about what else that I have, uh, I invest in Bitcoin. Uh, those blue cubes are awesome. Blue cubes. Uh, be happy I'm not in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you, man. Did we learn anything from the Libra session today? We did learn quite... I mean, we didn't... I wouldn't say we learned anything, uh, but it is a pretty interesting thing that, that Calibra stood its ground. Uh, and also, again, we'll get into that here in a little bit when we start talking about... Uh, when we start talking about how, in my opinion, what Steve Mnuchin said yesterday... You know, I've had time to think about it and rewatch it. And actually, I think he was very, very clear. And I think it's actually quite good for Bitcoin long term. Uh, because they could have came out very heavy handed. The United States government could have come out very heavy handed. And I was actually kind of shocked about the clear distinction that he made between what their goal is when it comes to cryptocurrency and what their goal is not. Uh, and I thought that, again, you're always going to get. And, you know, maybe this is just a good opportunity to talk about it a little bit. But but again, I'm going to have a, a segment for this later on in the show so I can really focus on it. You know, I think that a lot of people have to really like look very closely you know what? Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're going to we're going to move on. Oh, the blue cube desktop AC. I am acquiring all the one sat token coins. Can't go lower. I am doing it right or wrong. I mean, I hope you're joking, but uh, I mean, that is kind of funny. I mean, you know, you've got like literally you got a 50 50 chance. If they go up one sat, you doubled your investment, man. So that's, that's definitely that's definitely one thing to do. Okay, so closing below the 55 exponential moving average, meaning I will not be looking for longs uh, anytime. Now, again, there is obviously going to be a price area of interest. Let's go to the weekly time frame and see where we could potentially look for levels of support. On the weekly time frame, we've still got quite a ways to go till we come to the weekly baseline. Ooh, hey, somebody kicked the AC on. Whew, all right, so maybe by the break, I won't look like uh, I won't look like a madman ranting and raving about the price of Bitcoin. I think that if uh, the Senate Banking Committee were to see this as the only indicative video, they'd be like, "Yeah, this dude's crazy." Uh, yeah, brother. Uh, so on the weekly time frame, we do have quite a ways to go. We've got another almost, I would say, close to $1,000. Uh, a little bit less now, but, you know, if we take average price out. So right now on the week, uh, Bitcoin's price currently trading at 9500 So big drop today. I mean, just big drop down to 8807 Now, Now, uh, that is where our weekly baseline is coming out at 88 or 7. So of course, that's always going to be the area where I'm looking at anytime we're coming close to a baseline. That's an area where I am kind of on alert looking for a potential discretionary bounce trade. Uh, and also where I'm looking for that breakthrough to take a larger positional swing trade to the downside, for example, in this case, uh, because below that we don't have our secondary baseline coming in uh, until 6590. And as you can see, I think like 6590 was a very clear delineation of this market side. I mean, it's just very, very clear. Let's take off the um, Let's take off our 13 and our 21. Let's take off our primary and our secondary. And let's just look at our uh, secondary baseline and the role that it serves in trend. Uh, as you can see, the market is fairly delineated between bullish market over here. And of course, on this is the, the BitMEX chart. And we can actually go to the... Uh, let's go to BTC USD so we can have a little bit more historical data. Okay, here we go. 
So I think that this does a pretty good job of uh, of, do, of describing the difference between, look, here is bullish market when price is above the 55 exponential moving average. And when price, and as you can see here, price has a massive run up and tops out just like this. And then pulls back down to the 55. But when we close below the 55, that is nothing but bear market. And you don't want to be in the market. There's no long that is profitable in here. Uh, the, the individuals that are actually buying these movements and taking them to the upside are not retail traders. Uh, the, the failure rate for retail reversal traders is extremely high. That's why we don't trade reversals. Uh, and then as you can see, if you just continue moving forward, once price breaks back above that weekly 55, uh, it's just bull market. And then again, when price breaks back down below the 55, it's nothing but bear market. So we are above, so we are in a bull market. But every time we've topped out on the weekly frame, again, this looks very similar uh, to this coming in over here, right? So not as big of a correction. Again, uh, cryptocurrency was far more volatile. Bitcoin was far more volatile back in 2013. And again, uh, it's very hard to know in advance whether this is going to be this and continuation of the trend or whether this is this and this is a topping pattern. But anyways, it doesn't really matter because we have the daily. So we don't have to do that subjective. Is it this or is it that? The daily time frame tells you exactly what to do. It tells you whether to be long. It tells you whether to be short. It tells you when to buy. It tells you when to sell. And that is the point of having an objective, if this, then that strategy, when you step into the market so that you don't have to worry for one moment about what to do about price. You already know in advance what you're going to do because you have tested your system to know that it's going to tell you exactly what to do. No subjectivity needed. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's bring back our primary base. That's going to be our eight. Excuse me. Let's bring it back our primary baseline and our tertiary baseline. So again, areas to keep in your eye on for the weekly time frame are still going to be in the interim 8812. Now, if 8812 fails, then the next level that again, that, that, that we're going to be drawn like a magnet towards is going to be that 6673 with a brief stop at 7859. You know, the tertiary baseline has the potential to reverse price. It does do it all the time. But just keep in mind that that's a tertiary part of the strategy as opposed to a primary and secondary part of the strategy. So just things to note. Uh, so anyways, getting back to the daily, the daily is fairly clear here, though. We are breaking below all significant levels of support. So we do default back to that weekly if we are looking for a level where we might potentially become an interested buyer. This is obviously also going to be very congruent where our primary baseline is coming in on the weekly chart is also going to represent a shelf right here on the weekly time frame where we did have a level of support and resistance that we ended up breaking through, ran into resistance right here, two weeks to the down, actually one week of consolidation, one week of correction, and then we burst through that into our last month of expansion there before the last two weeks of overall downside. If you look at the weekly averages here on the candles. So again, uh, pretty bad news for Bitcoin bulls right now. Uh, you know, I had a couple people, you know, message me this morning saying, you know, oh man, I, I set some buy orders like really low around, you know, 10,500 or 10,400 and I just got smoked. And I'm like, yeah, because we don't buy reversals, man. So um, uh, silver, Sylvie, Sill. All right, I'm going to try this. You got to give me a second to, to think of, think this through. Sylvie Utra Loaba. Slaughtered it. Thank you so much for following over there on Twitch, my good friend. Uh, so anyways, it's 1230. We've got a whole lot to get through. So let's start going down to the lower time frames and actually looking for trade setup. So on the daily, uh, do would I want to jump into a short? Again, the trade is to the downside, but you always want to be really cautious jumping into your position after a big fuck you candle like that. Okay. Now, obviously, always the safest is going to be after you experience a candle like that to attempt to get in a better entry price as price pulls to the upside. The only reason I say that is because although I think the trade is going to continue to the downside, Again, after we have a massive candle like that, we often get interim correction. So again, let's say that you had gone short. Uh, let's bring back our indicators. Let's say that just for example, let's say you missed this signal. Let's say you were using the 21 as your baseline, right? So the 21 is your primary baseline. Let's just say in this example, and you close here below the baseline. Now let's not just take, let's not take Quadrigo average true range into account. So in that case, you would have the qualifying line, which is also part of PTP, but I digress. So let's say you just took the trade there. That was the right trade on the daily time frame but most traders ability to sit through about nine to ten percent of drawdown and incorrectly place their stop loss looking at average volatility because again let's actually do look at atr and we can see where our stop loss would have been 
for this trade. So look, taking a trade right here, where would our stop loss have been? Our stop loss would have been up here around 11,000.7. Now again, people are gonna, people, I always get this from like newer traders. They're like, that's a ridiculous stop loss. I'm like, no, that's a correct stop loss, dude. I'm sorry, if you're trading on the daily time frame, you don't set a $200 stop loss on an, on, on an asset with a $900 average true range of volatility. That means that on average price moves $900. So if your stop loss is within that $900, your ability that your stop loss is just going to get tagged is 50-50. I don't like those odds. I don't like these statistical odds that my stop loss has a 50% chance to get hit because it is within the daily range of volatility. You need to set your stop loss outside of the range of daily volatility. Again, 1.5 is a very conservative number. Holy crap. Zag is kicking butt, man. Adam Powers, thank you so much, man. Andrew Munns, did you take that trade to the upside, man? This is the liquidation version of consolidation. Uh, Professor Wally says, maybe I've been following the if this then Rex strategy by accident. <laughs> oh, man. DIY guy, good to see you, man. All right, so let's see here. Um, getting rid of Quadrigo ATR. Trade to the downside. Trade cautiously, guys. Let's go down to the 12-hour. We'll look for some short setups. Again, the daily has not given us a fresh signal since we did get the initial short signal that was confirmed on July 13th, 2019. Let's go down to the 12. Uh, the 12 gave the initial short signal over here on the, uh, excuse me, the 11th of July at the... Uh, at the middle of the day, so noon UTC. Uh, we also never got the indication to exit that trade either. Uh, we did have two day again, one day of drawdown on that trade. And this is what you need to do. This is what you need to be prepared for if you are A, an investor, or B, a swing trader or a positional trader. Uh, you need to have, but again, it's not going to be a big deal because you're position sizing appropriately pursuant to where your stop loss is placed. Always. Uh, so two day, uh, one day of drawdown and then just continued profit. Again, a couple days of price moving against you. Rejection from the 12 hour 55. And, and again, one thing I need to point out too is this is something that I brought attention to yesterday. And that is the pending cross under of the secondary baseline of the primary baseline crossing under the secondary baseline on the 12 hour time frame. I'm always looking for these things to precede them. It's already happened on the four. All right, it's already happened on the four. And what did that herald? That heralded a sharp move to the downside. When these uh, baselines cross over or cross under, they are indicative of long-term shifts in trend. Now, does that mean that this is the hand of God, 100% price is moving this way? No, but they have a high probability of success as opposed to, well, I think price is gonna go up or I think price is gonna go down. So again, here at Kraken Cryptocurrency, we only trade based off of data, only data that we can test. If we can't test it, it's not reliable data. So I don't really care what your trend line Fibonacci or spiral says, because I can't test that because every time you draw it, you're going to anchor it differently. Rudy Lee Plain, thank you so much, my brother. Uh, all my take profits got hit and my short is now closed. Should I just stand by before making another position or is it safe to keep shorting at least one X? Well, if you want to lock in all the money that you just made and be flat in the market, I would, again, you, you then what you need to be is one X long or one X short, excuse me, because if you are not in a position and you're on an abuse for, and you're on an inverse futures contract, you're long. Meaning if price goes down, your dollar value is going to be dropping. So just remember this, when you deposit money onto Bybit, BitMEX, uh, Deribit, or any other cryptocurrency exchange, if that money is in Bitcoin, if you deposit Bitcoin and then do nothing, your Bitcoin value will not change unless you buy or sell but your dollar value will change literally every minute, depending on what Bitcoin to USD's price does as the price moves up and down. When you sell into Tether, now you have a certain amount of Tether that will not change unless you buy or sell, but your Bitcoin value of that Tether will change based on the BTC USDT rate. You have flipped your base currency and your quote pair. You, fished your, you, you flipped, so when you were sitting in Bitcoin, the ticker symbol was BTC slash USD. You're sitting in Bitcoin and you're valuing against the dollar. When you take, uh, when you go into Tether, now it's different. Now it's USDT. You flip, you're sitting in USDT and you'd be valuing against Bitcoin. So same, when you deposit money on the BitMEX, Bybit, Deribit, any any leveraged exchange that's inverse futures, which is all of them for the most part, uh, you are, as, long, as soon as you deposit that Bitcoin, you're sitting in Bitcoin. So it's BTC USD. The crypto value you have will not change unless you buy or sell. The USD valuation will change. As soon as you go short, whatever you deposited, 
right? No more, no less, just short whatever you deposited. With the exception of a funding rate on a perpetual contract, you're, you have flipped the margin again. Now your USD valued against BTC. So your crypto amount will change, but the dollar value of the crypto that's left over whenever you close your position will not. This is so important for people to understand. I'm not yelling at you who asked the question, my friend. I, I just want to make this point clear because people do not seem to understand this. They go short and they think that they are losing money if price goes up. You're not. You're losing crypto. That's it. You're not losing dollar value. You have less crypto that is now more valuable. That is the purpose of hedging your value, of, ve of hedging your wealth with the use of derivative contracts. That's how you do it. That is how professional traders hedge against volatility. If I know I'm going to be on vacation, I put on a short. Do I care when I come back if price pumped up 1,000 or 10,000? No, because I only shorted the quantity of contracts. I have zero liquidation price, or it's like 999,000, and I do not have to worry about losing money. I mean, it's cool that I that I didn't make out on trades. That is for investment purposes. Trading is for active management. So if you want to profit off of all of Bitcoin's pumps for the rest of time, buy some Bitcoin, put it on a ledger, and don't ever touch it. If you want to make an active income as a trader, which is what I do this channel to show people how to do, the mindset required, the strategy required to earn. So let's say you need... $2,000 to $3,000 a month to live comfortably, or you only need 1,000, or you need 1,500, or you need five, whatever it is, you're just gonna require more capital to make more profit. But again, it's absolutely possible to make a living trading cryptocurrency full-time in this market with our spreads, with our volatility, with significantly less capital than you would need to trade Forex, than you would need to trade the stock market, okay? Now, does this mean you should not be an investor and you should not be smart with the income that you receive? No, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean that it is absolutely possible out there. And I know because I do it and because I've trained people to do it on a daily basis. And in fact, you do not need to have the startup capital because there are hedge funds and wealthy investors who are looking for a trader who can generate real results to trade their money and it's legal for you to do you do and in the United States you don't need to have gone to college you can be some you can be 18 not know what you're doing with your life definitely don't want to go to college definitely want to don't want to work for somebody grind for six months to a year and show that you can turn a thousand dollars into two thousand dollars Again, don't get your don't set your sights on. I'm going to take a thousand dollars and turn it into a million dollars. That is ridiculous. It's not going to happen. OK, those days are gone. I'm not saying that there's not investment opportunities out there that can't do a thousand X or a hundred X, but the odds that you're going to find the right one as an un as an uneducated investor, no offense. But if you're you know, if, if you're new to trading or new to investing, you are an uneducated investor. It's just ridiculous. But what you can do, what is a reality, is to make a daily active income from trading these markets and live off that comfortably and then be smart about the income that you get, save half of your money every month, grind for the next 10 years of your life, earn enough from your investments to generate enough passive income to never work a day in your life. If you're 18 right now, you can retire at 30. Okay? I started when I, I started all of this 10 years ago and I'm in that spot. Okay, and I'm on a goal to do this for the for, for for as long as I possibly can. But the reason why I come on the show every day and the reason I'm so passionate, and I've talked about this before, there are so many young men and women out there, especially in my country, who do not have a goal, who have not been educated about money, who do not know what they're doing. This is an opportunity that is real. This is a life-changing opportunities. And why I get so upset with most of the people in this space, especially when it comes to trading education, is because they represent this space as some altcoin get rich quick scheme that is just unrealistic and is leading people to lose money and absolutely not even take seriously the reality of the opportunity in front of them to trade a market that moves 10 to 20 percent a day i mean come on Uh, will I teach my, uh, <laughs> but, but sirs, I pay for Ian Bellina X100 ICO course. He is experts. Yeah, he was, he was experts for about three months. And then he, and then, you know, come to find out he got absolutely hacked for almost all of his crypto because that dude kept his private keys and his two factor ops on a Google drive 
uh, account that was his like college Google account. Just goes to show you, man. Uh, just, just goes to show you, man. Uh, that uh, most of the so-called experts are not. You really have to stress test somebody's knowledge about cryptocurrency, right? Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've given speeches. Uh, me and Scott have given speeches around the United States about cryptocurrency technology, about blockchain technology, uh, to generally uh, groups of individuals that do not know anything about the tech. Now, can I talk for five hours about, um, you know, uh, you know, ECDSA, uh, elliptic curve digital signature algorithms? No. I could talk for 30 minutes about it. I definitely know how they work. I know the hashing structure. I know the hashing algorithm. I know how SHA-256 works. I can explain all that in pretty fine detail. Uh, am I am I the go-to expert for, for uh, BTC development? No. No, I'm not. I would say that I know far more. My my edge is understanding psychology, is understanding how economics works, how money works, and how to control yourself and actually take advantage of things. You know, it's just... It just comes back to this, man. Like people, it, it, young people, people my age and my older people, even everybody, the majority of people just don't have any understanding of how to build a plan, right? A plan. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to get rich tomorrow. You're not going to get rich next week. You're not. If you're starting from nothing, you're not going to get rich next year. It's just not going to happen. Okay. What you need to do is develop the discipline Find a mentor and learn the skills to put you on a path to achieve the independence you want over a 10 to 20 year uh, uh, um, time frame. Okay, you have a choice. You can either go to college, become massively in debt, work for somebody else for the rest of your life, probably doing something you're going to dislike vehemently for the rest of your life, not learn how to save your money, not learn how to invest and retire when you're 65 and hope that Social Security and Medicaid are going to take care of you. Or that's option A, which is the option that just about everybody takes. Or option B, you learn how to invest, how to trade, how money works, how to work spreads, how to find a st statistical edge, and how to actually associate yourself with people who know what they're talking about and learn from professionals and learn from your peers and join a community that actually is dedicated to success. And you continue to grind and you put yourself on that plan for the next 10 to 20 years. And not only can you actively live that lifestyle now, but because you put in the work and invested wisely and plan for the future in 10 to 15 years, you never have to do another dang thing in your life because you've earning enough from your investments or enough from passive income to never work again. <sighs> Dude, I'm going to have an aneurysm. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I've always wanted that liberal arts degree. <laughs> I, that reminds me of the, uh, that reminds me of the, um, uh, that reminds me of, uh, the progressive, I saw this, I don't watch TV, but my, uh, I visited my parents the other day and, and I saw the, um, they were watching TV and this progressive commercial came on, I think it's progressive and it's like, uh, the instructor says, mm, and that's your standard three point turn. And then you got the dude in the bag. He's like, yeah, okay. See, what Teach here isn't telling you is the Progressive can save you. And again, Progressive, not a sponsor, but could be. Reach out to me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then he's like, man, I'm not even supposed to be in this class. I'm supposed to be in ceramics. So that's what that reminded me of, man. Drink some water. Cool down. Um, now the 12 hour long, let's look here. Uh, the 12 hour, uh, would have potentially gotten you out on a take profit short right here. But again, we're not going to get a primary signal from, uh, you know, we're writing a primary long. So we're looking at our primary exit. Now, RVG, I did get you out of the trade here. We do have this a little bit more sensitive. So because we're on a lower time frame, uh, you know, we could max this up a little bit. Now here's the interesting thing. RVGI on default settings, which is a good idea. You you want to start increasing the sensitivity of your indicators as you start going down time frames. So again, we bump them up on the daily because of how volatile crypto is. But on the 12, I think 10 is good. Uh, RVGI is just now telling you to get out of your short now. 
All right. So it's not a bad idea. Again, after a massive candle like that, everybody who's in a short position and a full risk short position takes some profit and takes some profit. That is a big candle, man. Don't I mean, you, you never want to be greedy. People just get greedy and then they never take profit. They never move their stop loss to break even. They're like, nah, man, it's going to go down another 30%. I'm going to sell my whole stack. I'm going to be rich. How about, man, price just moved. Book dong. I'm up 12%. That's really loud. Henry Weinecker, what's going on, my brother? From another mother, how you doing over there in the sunny Las Vegas, my good friend? Thank you so much for the $2. My brother says, got riot at $2, July 19 puts uh, for three cents. Downside level. Uh, let's see here. Okay, go check them out. They're three cents and sweet, dude. Currently, they're at, okay, five and a half. That's not bad, dude. That's a good put. Whoever's selling those is, I think, are a little reckless, bro. Oh, man. I mean, they're 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 OTM, but geez. Not six. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it, 6%. Okay, um, well, so to determine downside level, we need to do things like we need to be a little bit bullish because then we would have support beneath us. We don't have support beneath us. We are bearish. We are below this. So let's go to the weekly and see if we can determine levels. Yeah, we're weekly on the we're bearish on the weekly level. Um, so really all we can do now is let's go. Let's go find a daily order block, my friend. just me or like looking at this chart makes me think of that like uh what's that song like i would walk 500 miles something like that right okay so i do want to point one thing out i want to point one thing out so there's your put I do want to point out this. Actually, let's slide that open. Your puts, uh, your puts right there. Uh, I do want to point one thing out, which, you know, we're going to take a, a little bit of a deviation from PTP methodology here and just slink back into price action here for a little bit. So order block between 209 and $1.87. Um, and again, this is a little bit subjective because some people will say that, well, this should be the order block. I would argue that this is definitely the order block, especially if you look at how when price returned to this level, uh, this entire level of the close of this candle, we wicked up in, found resistance, pulled back, ended up consolidating within, and then broke through on huge volume, pulled back, tested it as support, and then we just tore off to the races right after that. So that is a breaker. That is a bullish breaker. So i.e., uh, anything that comes down to this level, anything that comes down to this level, you should long. That's how bullish breakers work. When price is broken, when price breaks through a level of resistance and then retreats, that is a breaker. So a breaker is a specific uh, structure, but this is a breaker. Uh, and as we can see, price wicked down, closed up fairly strongly. Now, if we end up, uh, ideally, here's what you want to see. If we end up closing below, uh, then I, I think you'll be good to go. July 19th, three days for a $2 downside. Okay. I'm not sure on the time decay function, man. I don't know if we're going to drop before July 19th. Um, cheap puts, though, man. I get it. Cheap puts. So 
So this is how I would, I, I mean, the order is already in. This is how I would manage it. You know, on the daily, uh, let's look at what our, let's look at what we're writing. So we are writing a continuation short and we now have our take profit on our short signal. Uh, RVGI has not yet crossed it to the upside. So this is your first early warning signal to be out of your short position. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean get in a long. It just means, hey, get out of your short because you want to lock in some good profit. You want to grab all that. All that profit. CCI is below zero on the daily. Watatar is still bearish. Rising explosion level. Printing columns above. And RVGI hasn't crossed under. I would probably exit the position if... Actually, excuse me. We're on the daily and RVGI needs to get trimmed down a little bit. Yeah, RVGI still hasn't crossed over even with eight. Um, I would probably exit the put. I would probably, I would probably drop the position if... Um, Especially if they're, especially if you bought them at three and fifty-five, you could make money on the spread already. So DIY guy, order blocks are required for a breaker to form. Order blocks turn into breakers. Uh, that's how they work. Uh, who to blame? Riot's a garbage company. That's all there is to it. Well, that's speaking to the fundamentals, sir. I don't quite know. I didn't mean that disparagingly, too, by the way, DIY. Sorry, just a little worked up. Oh, man. Do I think we are going to move up now, or is it a fake move since we just dropped significantly? Anytime we drop significantly and move up, it is always to be considered a fake move. It is only when we break a significant level of resistance or establish a dominant trend. Uh, no problem, Henry, man. That's that's what I do, man. I think that uh, if, if, in, if in one more day, here's what I do. If in one more day, I'd say by tomorrow, because you're kind of near in break time, but you want to take action two days above, and I don't want to give you the bad advice. Of course, you're going to have to be responsible for the move that you make in the market. But were it me, were it me, uh, you know, depending on if I get different information, I would probably snag the the P and L. Uh, you know, buying a 0.03 if you're able to sell the puts at 55. Um, that's a pretty nice little. That's a nice little spread, man. Um, because, you know, and I think that the the technical indications of Minx here does a pretty good job of telling you, hey, man, you're writing a continuation short in the first place. Time to grab out. Time to get out of your continuation short. So, uh, the on the other hand, you know, you could wait one more day, take on more risk, and if price still has not closed below your put get rid of it then best of luck to you man but from what i understood of uh how you described it man good good snag good snag right now um back to bitcoin Poly station, not a bad, not a stupid question whatsoever. What is a good price for Ethereum or Litecoin? Uh, it depends. If you are an investor, then any price. If you have faith in the crypto. If you want to be a trader, then the only answer to that question is at the price where your system should be telling you to go long or short. I seem edgy and irritable today, bro. Uh, I got a tetanus shot. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's like, maybe I'm roiding out because of the tetanus shot. Ah, I do kind of feel a little edgy. I'm just kind of worked up too, man. Uh, did I buy the dip? No, I don't buy dips. I trade trends. I think I'm drinking too much coffee in the morning. Could be it. But I do kind of feel a little, I wouldn't say irritable. I feel calm, but I do feel a little, I don't know. I do feel a little on edge. I do feel you, man. I kind of feel like I'm being a little bit of a jerk this morning, which I don't like. 
So listen, guys, I apologize if I'm offended anybody. The heat, no air, does it every time. It is still hot. There's a sauna in here. It is ridiculous. Okay. So, you know what, guys? I think that's a good opportunity for me to go grab some ice water. Let me go fill up the ice water receptacle right there. Um, and when I come back, guys, don't go anywhere because we've got such good stuff to go over when I get back. We're going to talk all about uh, Dave Marcus and LibraCoin when I come back. We're going to talk about Morgan Stanley's recent report on Tether. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about my thoughts on Steve Mnuchin. We're going to break down Ethereum. We're going to look at the Forex markets, having some good profits today with my trades in the Forex markets. So we'll break those down and what my next moves are going to be. Do some live Forex trading potentially and... We'll look at traditional markets as well and answer your questions. So don't go anywhere, guys. And before we do go to the break, um, as traders, selecting our exchange is going to be one of the most important decisions we will make. As a professional trader, I'm often asked, what metrics do I use to evaluate an exchange? And the advice that I give to everyone that I give to you when evaluating what exchange you want to trade on is to look at their security their ease of use, and their customer service. Ideally, your exchange should have all of those things on lock before you even consider putting significant capital or any capital for that matter onto that exchange. Now, I trade Bitcoin futures and the platform that I trade my Bitcoin futures on is Bybit because they check all of those boxes for me. If you guys would like to check out Bybit and why I prefer Bybit significantly compared to BitMEX, you guys can go over to bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. If you use that link, They'll give you up to $60 just to test out their platform. They have a perpetual swap contract for Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, and Ripple with more to come soon. You do have to uh, deposit the underlying asset to trade on them. They will be having a coin swap feature coming out soon though. But I switched because of their customer service. For example, uh, there was um, uh, just, just the other day, just the other day. Uh, and the reason why I like Bybit is because they solve problems. So. Uh, Bybit does pull its index price from Kraken. And there was about a five to 10 minute window the other day when Kraken's uh, volatility threw off a lot of exchanges. Now, Bybit had not unlinked its index price from Kraken. And for that reason, there was about a five to 10 minute window when uh, Bybit's index price was higher than uh, than nominal spot exchange, right? The last trader price was still low, but the mark price, which PL is calculated off of, and that caused a few traders some problems, all right? But guess what they did? Unlike BitMEX, now now that story might uh, might scare people away. That's absolutely fine. But Bybit made it right. They refunded all the funds. Uh, that with any If anybody lost any money, they refunded the funds and they made things right because they actually care, right? And that's been my experience with Bybit. But anyways, you guys can get $60 for free just to go test their platform out. Take the test yourself. That's bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Take the Pepsi taste test. Take the Pepsi taste test challenge and decide for yourself. Now, I'll be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere.
All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking with me. So we're going to get right into the news for today. We got a lot to talk about. Let me bring back up this thing and this thing and this thing. Andrew, you're on the 20 year chart. Shade thrown. Uh, Vincenzo, thanks so much for joining the community over there on YouTube, my friend. All right. So, what do we got going on today? Okay, so I don't have a good... Uh, we'll just go here. I don't have a good... Um, this is uh, about the best article, so we're just going to talk about this for a while. So, Dave Marcus was grilled today by the Senate banking community on, or excuse me, the Senate Banking Committee on LibraCoin and Facebook in general. And as I said during the opening of the show, the senator seemed hell-bent on hurling as much mud as possible at Facebook. Now, I am not here to take either a positive or a negative stance on Facebook. That is not for me to tell you guys what to do. I think that a lot of people, depending on where you fall on the political side of the spectrum, are going to have your anger at Facebook magnified. It seems the people who fall to the left side of the spectrum seem to be mad at Facebook over things like voting fraud, at things like Russian bots, at things like election, you know, just all of that kind of stuff that they assume happens. Whereas people on the right hate Facebook for what they feel are Facebook's leftist policies, toward pushing leftist policy, toward censoring right wing, uh, you know, commentators and things of that nature, um, as well as uh, basically destroying their ad revenue, which they've done to both sides, depending on where you fall. And so again, we're not going to get into that too much because I think that that is a more personal thing. And sometimes we swing a little wildly politically on this channel. So we're just going to try and keep it neutral today. But just some key things that I kind of picked up. Honestly, I didn't think it was that that fantastic. Uh, it, it seemed to it seemed very clear to me that the senators were in in no uncertain terms trying to state very clearly that they were not happy about Facebook, that they do not trust Facebook, that they do not think that Facebook has the right to do what they're doing. But there was literally no words or talk about we're going to shut you down or we have the right to shut you down because you are getting into very complicated legal territory about censorship and free speech. You know, the United States does not have the right to just say, uh, you know, you're not allowed to do this. As long as they comply with banking regulations and cross all the T's and dot all the I's, there is very little that the now, of course, the government can do what they want. They can they can attempt to move social factors into their position to 
bypass the rule of law. This is always what gov- this is what governments do historically when they attain too much power. Uh, they will cast public opinion in their light to to attempt to rewrite laws, and that's exactly generally when rule of law fails and countries collapse. Right when countries generally go against their constitutions, their founding doctrines, so that they can rewrite the law of the lands uh, or the, the laws of the land in favor of uh, the political right nowness. And then that is typically when countries fail, because once you start trespassing upon your fundamental core values, uh, then you've lost who you are and you either need to reincorporate, rebrand yourself. And in the case of nation states, this often comes with a whole lot of barbarians invading. This usually comes with some fire. This usually comes with lots of death. This usually comes with starvation as well. When nation states want to reinvent themselves, when nation states lose their founding ways, uh, then it generally results in a lot of horrible living standards for uh, for a few generations. Now, Dave Marcus said that if Libra is not successful, then a blockchain-based financial system out of the reach of the United States government will likely emerge to serve half of the world that is not serviced by the existing banking infrastructure. Now, what is interesting to me is that governments coming on the heels of Mnuchin's press conference yesterday, coming on the heels of the coming on the heels of the banking committee hearing today, governments cannot, especially in the United States, the United States government cannot deny, in my opinion, the inevitability of cryptocurrency any longer. Uh, They have been trying. I I think that it is now the cat is completely out of the bag. Governments are now terrified or understanding that cryptocurrency will not fail, that Bitcoin is not just speculation, that it has value as a technology and that that technology will not be going away anytime soon. And obviously from a speculative nature, nobody's sure, even though Bitcoin is the superior form of technology, nobody can look into the future and say, no, Bitcoin's absolutely the one that's gonna succeed. It might be Libra coin, it might be China coin, it might be uh, Amazon coin, it might be Ethereum, it might be Tron, who knows? It could be Spank coin for all we know. Uh, It just depends on what coin societies will adopt and what coin will best suit our needs. Now, again, I am an ardent believer that human beings adopt the best form of technology given enough time, given enough evolution. This is literally technological evolution and how human beings approach new changes in our society. But it is important to note that the best technology does not always become the most popular technology. Otherwise, Apple products would not be so popular. So moving on, uh, Dave Marcus said, quote, I actually believe that if we stay put, we're going to be in a situation in 10 to 15 years where we're really going to have half of the world that is going to operate on blockchain based technology that will be out of reach from our national security apparatus. So throwing the gauntlet down pretty strongly against the Senate with those statements. Now, again, as I said in the opener, watching Congress grill Facebook about surveillance and privacy was hilarious. Okay, there was a pretty much just a big fear campaign on display from the senators uh, with with Senator Brown in particular doing everything possible to sow seeds of distrust against Facebook uh, and in the favor of the United States government. He brought up the 2016 election fraud. He brought up the spread of false media. He brought up Facebook's questionable activities lately in Myanmar. Uh, He said that it's, quote, pretty hard to trust Facebook, sick, when there is so little contrition about their activities. To which Marcus basically responded like a boss, like, yeah, man, we just think that our product is so valuable that we're going to do it. I mean, that that was basically the conversation. If you sum it up, it was the it was the senator saying Facebook sucks. Why are you doing this? And Dave Mark is pretty much just kind of like a boss being like, because we can and we're going to suck it up. That's pretty much how the conversation went. Like they, they, I will say this for Facebook. I mean, they chose a really, really good representative in Dave Marcus. I mean, doesn't mean that I'm pro Libra coin. Doesn't mean that I think that this is good. Doesn't mean that I think it's bad, but just, just objectively watching that hearing. I mean, Dave Marcus took everything on the chin and gave it right back. So, um, I will say that again, you know, the United States government lecturing anybody on security and privacy is complete cognitive dissonance, complete cognitive dissonance. But of course, you know, it's good to know that we have Facebook's lobbyists and political spending on our side for once, maybe. Uh, Okay, so, you know, I'd be really interested to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on this. I know that the opinions are going to vary far and in between on Facebook. You know, Libra coin is going to be evil. Facebook is going to be evil, blah, 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 blah. And that's absolutely fine. You guys are entitled to your opinions. My personal take on this is I think that Libra coin will succeed. 
I think that if Libra coin doesn't succeed, then we're going to get the lesser of two evils. We are going to see corporate coins. Just as Andreas Antonopoulos said, the the Pandora's box has been opened and it was only a matter of time before we saw a corporate based uh, cryptocurrency, which most likely is going to receive global adoption faster than a decentralized cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and Ethereum. But this is a good thing for Bitcoin and Ethereum and why I will not sell my Bitcoin investment and why I will continue to trade these markets. But of course, as a trader, I can go to whatever is more liquid and, and produces the most profit right now. That's cryptocurrency. Uh, but again, we've also been trading Forex. Now, now uh, I will say this. The reason why Bitcoin is so secure is because it was allowed to grow to build a network of support, of decentralized support, while everybody pretty much ignored it. And I think that it's going to get its next, you know, it's, it's going to get its next significant boost of a lot of the attention and spotlight moving toward these, these corporate coins for what could be a cycle for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, potentially, okay? Uh, because they are going to happen and they are going to be a thing. I don't, I mean, they have a probability to fail, but I think that they are going to succeed because on its face, they're going to make our lives objectively more convenient the same way that all these products and services already make our lives more convenient. For example, cell phones, Facebooks, apps, technology, all of these things improve the quality of our lives, but reduce typically our privacy and our security. So you kind of have staunch defendants in one hand who say that privacy and security is everything. But again, then you have other people in the other hand who just want technology and convenience and technological innovation at the expense of privacy and security. Uh, for me, I fall in between the middle. Uh, freedom is what's most important to me. And obviously, privacy and security is a necessary component of freedom. So I'm always going to be and know that those things that boost freedom are the better technologies. But as I said, as a preface to this argument, just because something is a better technology does not mean it will be adopted first. People's hearts and minds have to be changed. Things like Libra coin, things like what we'll probably see soon, Amazon coin, will, will bring people's minds to the concept of global adoption and will spread the concept of blockchain, whatever it tends to be, but, but digital currency uh, worldwide. It will. It absolutely will. That is my firm prediction for the future. The corporate coins will spread global adoption of digital assets and blockchain and pseudo blockchain technology. It's going to happen. Uh, the reason it's going to happen is because they have better marketing campaigns. They have better budgeting. They have dedicated developers. They have more money. They have more capital. They have more investment. They have more ground share. They have more ability to influence politics. They just can better than a decentralized group of developers and individuals who support a crypto project. But Bitcoin still remains the better technology, and it will take individuals using corporate coins and having their privacy and personal information and digital security trampled upon to understand why a decentralized privacy focused cryptocurrency is absolutely essential. It is Libra coin and it is things like Libra coin that will bring the entire world onto digital assets. But it is Bitcoin that will be there to pick them up as these, you know, it's kind of like the boys of summer thing, right? You've got the good guy, you know, and he's the best guy for the girl. And then the girl is like humanity, right? Uh, and, you know, I'm sorry if this is this is offensive to anybody. This is just a, this is just an overgeneralization. Right. And, you know, the you know, the or, or guy. Right. You typically go with people that excite you in your 20s. And then when you're in your 30s, you settle down with that individual that that you realize was the right person for you when you were younger. Right. So it's going to be the same thing with humanity as the analogy here for the human being. And as Bitcoin, as the tried and true guy or gal, and with Libra coin being that hot, sexy thing down the street. OK, it's faster, it's cheaper, it's quicker, it's more convenient. It's you know, it's not as decentralized. It's not as private. It's not as secure, but it's here, here, fast now and does everything you want really quickly for cheap. OK, now that's that's not to say the cryptocurrencies won't. But I do see corporate coins taking the edge in the interim just because of their ability and advantage in the marketplace in general. Right. Uh, and you also have investors that are looking at these things as well. And they can look at the track record. They can look at the P.E. ratio. They can look at the dividends, for example, of a company like Apple. They can look at a company like Facebook. They can look at all these things. Right. And they're already blue chip stocks that they're most likely invested in, as opposed to something that is more volatile like cryptocurrency. So, uh, you know, will this kill Bitcoin? Absolutely not. Uh, might this have a negative effect on Bitcoin in the short term? Yes, it possibly could. Is it does it have a good, good long term fundamental effect for Bitcoin? Yes, because this does not change the fundamentals of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still the best form of sound money that has been invented. It is the best uh, medium of transfer. It is the best store of value that has been invented. Why? Because it has fundamental value and it is the best technology. This is just a speed bump on the road. But I think an accelerant 
to global adoption if you guys look out down the road long enough. Now, again, some people are going to vehemently disagree with me, and some people I hope can see the intelligence and the nuanced thoughtfulness of that argument. Let me know what you guys think in the chat and in the comment section down below if you happen to be re-watching this video later while I move on to our next little article here about Morgan Stanley Research. Now, again, uh, Morgan Stanley confirming something that I've talked a whole lot about in my research, in my reporting, in my talking on the stream about how this current bull cycle is not fueled by retail investors. It is fueled by cryptocurrency veteran investors, right? So when I say bull run fueled, I do not mean by traders because traders do not fuel typically movements. It is typically investors that fuel movements because they are typically buying in larger sums and holding on to those sums. And then when they ch and when they sell or when they buy, then typically the, chin the trend changes. Now, uh, according to Morgan Stanley, their research shows that only one third of Bitcoin is traded against fiat currency. I've talked a lot about how this recent rise in Bitcoin's price again has been fueled by veteran crypto investors, not retail. This is because retail investors are not comfortable with or familiar with using Tether. You don't come in off the streets. You guys think back to your first uh, Bitcoin purchase. You didn't buy Bitcoin with Tether. And you didn't take the Bitcoin that you just bought for the first time and buy Tether. You didn't even know what the heck Tether was for all of you guys who just came around in 2017 or early 2018. Uh, Tether is something that you move into after a while. And the reason Tether became so popular is because it became a safe haven during the collapse of 2017 or excuse me, of 2018 in the, in the bear market that began in 2018. Now, Tether is and has been for a while the most popular asset for buying Bitcoin. Two thirds of all Bitcoin is traded against Tether. Uh, this is also this for this reason. This is why I have a bullish bias, and I believe that we have much farther to go overall in this current market cycle uh, because we haven't seen retail FOMO in which at what would most likely be the top because when retail FOMOs in, they will not be buying Bitcoin with Tether. They will be buying Bitcoin with fiat currency. So when we see that dominance change from Bitcoin being bought primarily with Tether as it sits right now and as it has been all year, and for the majority of 2018. And when we switch, see that switch back to fiat currency, so USD, uh, you know, uh, the Chinese yuan, the, the Japanese yen, uh, the European zone euro, whatever it might be, whenever we see fiat dominance take control over Tether, that is an indication to us that retail investors are stepping in and buying up significantly more Bitcoin now than they were before. Right now, as long as Tether leads the market, it lets us know that it is crypto veterans who are fueling this, this rally, who are continuing this rally. Um, and when we do see retail foam at the top, when we see that dominant switch from Tether to USD, uh, that is most likely going to be the area to be looking for an exit or again, as I say, take profit, move your stop loss to break even. Uh, so this is why I feel very confident as well about my long-term Bitcoin investments. I'm comfortable holding Bitcoin for the next 10, 15, 20, 50 years until I die because there is something that I can will on to my child. So uh, nothing has changed about the fundamental value of Bitcoin as an investment. Now, of course, another way to look at this I will say this, another way to look at this is as a potentially uneasy confirmation of Tether's influence on Bitcoin's price, especially if you pay a lot of credence to the allegations of misconduct on behalf of the Tether Treasury and Bitfinex, for example. So just something to keep in mind in the back of your head. Now, I want to talk about um, I want to talk about Steve Mnuchin a little bit. And so we're going to switch back over to uh, we're going to switch back over to Bitcoin here. Uh, and I need to put some eye drops in. So pardon me. Okay, so if it looks like I'm crying, and you just tuned in, it's because literally just five seconds ago I put eye drops in. Still getting used to the contacts. Okay, so uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the Mnuchin uh, press conference yesterday because I've had time to think about it a little bit more, time to review what he said, and it seems <laughs> I don't do substances, man, but um, uh, but uh, from what I understand, uh, it, it's 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 pretty bomb around here, brother. I don't know. Uh, you can't hear the music. Uh, no, that is uh, it's not clear. Eyes, but uh... turn the music up to forty. Let me know if you guys can hear it now. I'm crying too, Justin. No worries. 
just singing that Bitcoin, please go to moon and just crying your eyes out. Now, um, you know, I've had time to think about the Steve Mnuchin report. And it occurs to me that this was actually quite a good thing for Bitcoin. So they could have cut, you know, the United States government, the executive branch could have come out and been very heavy handed and they chose not to because, again, they're not absolutely retarded. Uh, you know, in fact, Mnuchin said yesterday that he was speaking about not about the value of Bitcoin as an asset or its use as a speculative investment. I'm actually pretty pleased with the clarity on, in his statements between the United States stated goal of stopping illicit activity, which I want to point out is something that I am for right now. I, again, this is you know, warning. We're, we're coming up upon a rant because uh, I do not. Let me just speak personally as a human being, right? <clears throat> because again, this seems anytime, uh, and this is coming from an ANCAP, anytime somebody says, yeah, man, like uh, the, the reason they want to do that is so that they can stop terrorists. And as soon as somebody says that, everybody always says, I don't want to say everybody, but most people say who are in this space, they're like, yeah, man, that's just so they can control you, man. That's just so they can get in and the Illuminati lizard lords can just read your mind. You have to understand this, right? For all the conspiracy around the world, for all of the militias, for all of the shady stuff that the United States government does, it is undeniable that terrorists do exist. And there are some things that happen that the United States government is not in absolute control about. I think that just like most individuals and entities in the world, there is a ton of stuff that happens that the United States government is like, oh, man, I didn't see that one coming. What the heck? Scramble, scramble, scramble. They're just like everybody else, man. Like nobody in the world has the world on lockdown. Everybody, you know, and, and I talk about this a lot, how conspiracy theory thinking leads you into feeling powerless generally right there are going to be some individuals that are like man take the fight to the man and that's absolutely fine if you feel passionate enough about your conviction that you're going to get out there and fight in whatever way you feel capable of as long as you're not hurting me or my family that's absolutely fine but if you have children if you have people that depend upon you and you're out there thinking that you're going to lead violent rebellion in the streets as i've said before you are now violating a contract to your family to protect them now there are certain situations that do stand for a man or a woman to rise up and fight to protect his family absolutely um you know but uh, the, the idea that we're gonna that that we're gonna stand up against the the evil Illuminati lizard lords, I think, is pretty silly. Uh, just in my personal opinion, because um, I do not think that any entity out there has the world on lockdown. I don't think that anything has the world in a stranglehold grip. I think that sh that uh, I think that happens for the most part. I think that it happens, and overall, human beings have the ability and the capacity to not only change their personal environment and their personal mentality, mind, and thought process through discipline, dedication, and training, but also they have the ability to influence their family, their familial relationships, their relationships with their partner, and their relationships with their community. And from then, they can change the world. Human beings have undeniably helped to change the world, which kind of, to me, puts the foot, the sock in the mouth of anybody who says everything is absolutely run by conspiracy theories. Now, there are, st there are things out there that are suspicious to me. There are conspiracy theories that I do believe in, right? Not everything just because something is a conspiracy theory doesn't mean it's bogus, but most are, in my opinion. Most are. Uh, or at least completely unverifiable and pointless to talk about. Now, there are some things that are very important, and it's important for us to have a fundamental understanding of our world. But I'm really talking about the more specific... You guys know what I'm talking about. The very specific mentality of, conspiracy, of conspiratorial thinking that tends to surround the internet and the plague. And I think that tends to surround the internet, the YouTube space, the Twitter space, like a plague. And I think a lot of this is because a lot of individuals are uneducated about science. A lot of individuals are, are, are uneducated about a lot of things. But, uh, but in particular, science is a big one. Science is definitely a big one. Um, so uh, you know, let, let's relate that back to the United States government. Undeniably, terrorism is a problem for the United States government, for governments all around the world. Okay, drug trafficking is a problem. Drug trafficking is not just... Drug trafficking and terrorism is, I absolutely agree, used as a weapon by all nation states to enact policy that supports them, undeniably. And I will not deny, and I vehemently agree with you, that that policy is often to push through subversive agendas to limit the freedom, privacy, and security of their citizens or give the government more control. But those two things are not 
mutually unexclusive, right? Terrorism is a legitimate problem for nation states. Drug trafficking is a legitimate problem for, for terrorist states, or uh, for, for nation states, terroristic states, which is also true, one could argue. And, uh, and, and child trafficking, for example. is So all these things that governments say are obviously bullshit to a large degree. Sorry, let me retry that. To a large degree. But, um, but they're also a problem. So let's assume that government was not there. Let's assume that we live in the NCAP paradise and government is not there. Do we not want to stand up against things like drug trafficking, uh, against um, gangs, against crime, against violent crime, against murder, against rape, against human trafficking, against all these things? So all these things are legitimate. And I just, although I completely agree and think that the government is very hypocritical when it lists these things on top of many atrocities that they've done, I also just want to make sure that that cognitive dissonance isn't people because I've had literally conversations with people where I'm like, yeah, man, like, you know, let's assume that we're in the future. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm definitely going to be for like local community laws that are against like, you know, uh, you know, human trafficking and stuff like that. And people are like, no, nah, man, that's freedom, dude. Are you against freedom? Well, yeah, I mean, freedom means that I'm free to conduct my activities the way that I want. And if and, and if our society wants to band together and say, you know what, we don't like yellow shirts. We're free to do that, man. So I, I think that there's just a lot of, um, uh, you know, I don't know. It worries me sometimes that we have a generation of individuals that are finally now being turned on to like ANCAP thinking or libertarian thinking. And they take it like supremely to the far extreme where now they think that that that, that evil is justified by freedom. Right. Uh, if you if you traffic drugs, I, I'm not cool with you. If you sell, you know, if, if you want to use substances, that's absolutely fine. But again, when you get involved in selling large and large and large quantities of drugs, typically crime is involved. And again, maybe that's like a sticky area that I don't necessarily want to st step into. But but in general, let's say that drugs are legal. If you are involved in any violent behavior that hurts people, I'm not going to be for you, man. And I'm going to be for uh, laws that try to limit what you're trying to do. Now, I don't want those laws in the hands of a centralized federal government. I would like those laws in local principalities. I would like those laws conducted by the state and then on the local county level. I think that's how things should operate. And I think that is the next the next natural step to get away from our centralized oligarchy of a federal government that just has its tentacles into everything. OK, we're not going to be able to go from where we are now to to anarcho-capitalism. It's just not going to happen, man. The idea that the world's going to burn down and what will emerge is an anarcho-capitalistic paradise has never happened throughout history. It's not going to happen now. Anarcho-capitalism is a very nuanced and complex concept of freedom and individuality that has to be adopted worldwide, just like Bitcoin. The only way we're going to get there is slowly and patiently. And there are natural progressions between here and there. The first obvious natural progression is to limit the size and scope of the federal government and restore power, restore that same power back to the states and back to, lo uh, back to lo local counties, right? And then from there, you go more to the county and less away from the state, less away from the federal government. And then from there, maybe you don't really need to do much because if you don't like where you are, you fucking move. I got to get better at that. I got to get better at that button. Uh, uh, Sasha Huckel, thank you so much for the follow over there on Twitch, my good friend. I think I missed somebody on YouTube, but I think there's something wrong with my stream level. So if you did subscribe on YouTube, thank you so much. Anyways, uh... The, Va the Vatican owns me. Well, I can definitely turn the music down, man. Hashtag impending rant.
So, I mean, you know, it's a complicated topic, man. You know, it really is. At the end of the day, I want what's best for myself, for my children, for my community, for my family, for the people that I love in this world. I just am really firmly against a lot of conspiratorial thinking because in my opinion, it leads to feeling that you cannot affect the world around you. So how does this relay back to Steve Mnuchin? Uh, because, you know, I think that he came out and said that they're interested in Bitcoin being used illegally. Okay. Which again, if you're using Bitcoin illegally to buy illegal things, not very smart to do your, to do your illegal purchases with a trackable cryptocurrency on a public blockchain. But again, I digress. Uh, you know, coin mixers, uh, you know, may or may not protect you. And, um, Yeah, here's the thing, man. Let me let me touch on that. I feel like I'm stepping into like salty waters here, but 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 here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. Um, yes. Uh, let, let's put it to you. Let, let me put it this way. Um, there are because I because I see the comments in here, man. Um. So uh, as far as uh. Everyone needs to buy Bitcoin now. It's Storm Area 51. <laughs> I think it's better if they use Bitcoin, Justin, than there's proof on a public ledger versus cash. Uh, yeah, I mean, from, I guess, you know, from, from maybe maybe a, a tracking standpoint, but I just meant for them, for them, if they're trying to avoid prosecution from a government that what they're doing is illegal in their, their locality. So, hmm. now, you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a tough one, man. Uh, thoughts on Tulsi Gabbard? I don't really have an opinion on Tulsi Gabbard. She leans toward the left. I mean, there. I've I've gotten. A, I'll just be honest with you. I really don't know anything about her, right? I haven't really looked into what she said or what she does or anything like that. You know, you know, at the at the risk of like, at the risk of being, uh, at the risk of getting pigeonholed into not doing my research. I just haven't though. You know, I just haven't. I don't know. I literally know zero things about her, uh, except for, uh, like she wants to. You know. Like she wants, she she has a soft stance on drugs, from what I understand, and um, this and that, this and that. What do I think the United States would do if Bitcoin would implement some kind of a privacy feature? They'd be mad. They'd be mad. I mean, maybe, uh, but they absolutely will. In fact, Arthur Hayes just talked about how he predicts that there's going to be a hard fork for Bitcoin that implements absolute privacy. Well, I hope so. <sighs> okay, guys, so I'm just going to move along.
Um. Help me, Scotty Juan Kenobi. You're my only hope. 4X. Let's go to 4X. All right. Let's uh, do some 4X. Okay. Okay, heading over to the OCN. Okay, as you can see, uh, OCN hitting my... I went long on the OCN over here. Hit my first take profit overnight. I've moved my stop loss up a little bit above my uh, break even. In fact, I could probably move that baby down, but yeah, it should really be at my uh, at my break even price right now. But yeah, I'm okay with it right now. Um, uh, my NAV on uh, my forex account with Awanda continues to grow. It's it's pretty good, man. Uh, the Aussie dollar. Uh, Aussie dollar threw up this long signal. We would have hit take profit one potentially, but did not take this trade. Uh, didn't take the trade. Didn't really like the volume, uh, even though Wada Tar did confirm CCI did go up as well. But this is just one that I didn't take and price pulling back down. I uh, will look for an entry maybe a little bit closer to the baseline because we do have here on the daily, I do want to point out, we do have the baseline potential crossover, right? Did give it a nice little try right here. Obviously, if we if we kind of zoom out a little bit, we can see consolidation with the Aussie dollar. Uh, but again, we have to understand that Forex pairs move differently than stocks and different than crypto. So we have to talk about them a fundamentally different way. Uh, Canadian Swissy just bowing back to the daily baseline, giving a nice reversal baseline bounce trade. Didn't take this one, uh, but we still are overall bullish. But I keep an eye on CCI here, threatening to go to the downside. Same with uh, Minx. Same with Minx, threatening to go to the downside here. Uh, CAD Yen, again, took pro uh, took took the CAD Yen long. Uh, where was the long signal? Continuation long signal here and took my profit here and here. Uh, no re-entry trade yet. Of course, we do have the baseline bounce trade, but again, I'm just waiting for a nice good signal. Uh, Swiss Yen is in, definitely in a no trade position right here. There's just nothing to do with the Swiss Yen. Uh, the Euro Aussie, uh, let's see, threw up that continuation short signal over here. Very good trade. Uh, Euro CAD is throwing up a continuation short signal today. So let's make that note there. Might be taking this one short tonight. Uh, Euro Swissy, uh, let's see here. No, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, threw up that confirmed short signal on this candle right here, but I do not like the volume. So this is definitely not the one that we took, but keep your eye on the Euro Swissy potentially for a pullback and then a re-entry. Um, uh, here's my uh, Euro Kiwi trade short on the Euro Kiwi from right here. You can see my entry taking this to the downside. Uh, you know, it took profit on this candle right here. And I'm just letting the rest of my position ride with my stop loss at break, even waiting for a good exit signal. Uh, Euro pound uh, took the Euro pound long yesterday uh, and price has hit my first take profit on the Euro pound. My stop loss is now above my entry and just waiting. Euro yen, I don't see anything to do on the Euro yen today. Continuation short uh, a couple days ago. Overall volatility. Uh, again, a uh, continuation short was a very good signal, taking price to the downside. Uh, Euro dollar. Uh, looks like it came back up to test the tertiary baseline and then continued its movement to the downside. In fact, throwing up a continuation short signal today. Uh, the pound kiwi. Uh, gave a continuation short signal over here on the 10th and price continuing to the downside. Uh, the pound cad is throwing up a continuation short today. Uh, the pound Swissy took the pound Swissy short on this candle right here. A little bit of drawdown for a couple days and then price pulling down. Hitting my first uh, take profit on today's candle and I've moved my stop loss to break even as you can see this morning. Uh, pound Yen again threw up a continuation short signal yesterday. Pound Dollar throwing up a continuation short today. Uh, the Kiwi dollar, uh, very similar to that other asset that we looked, gave a long signal a couple of days ago, would have hit take profit one, pulling back a little bit. Uh, very similar, as we can see on the daily, we can see that 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 baseline cross over, so I'd be looking right around this area. Uh, Kiwi CAD, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kiwi CAD uh, was long. I'm still long on the Kiwi CAD. Uh, went long on this long signal. Pretty big pullback down to the tertiary baseline and price pumping up uh, quite nicely. Now, going to end on a spinning top doji. This one is going to be held on to for a while. Unless I get a signal to exit. The Kiwi Swissy is still riding a continuation long from a couple of days ago that, that uh, foreshadowed the breakout trade. Uh, similar to the Kiwi Yen, the Kiwi Yen signal, a continuation long signal over here that heralded a breakout trade. Uh, the dollar CAD is still riding a continuation short signal. Uh, the pound Aussie is still riding a continuation short signal. Uh, the dollar Swissy uh, gave a unconfirmed short signal, so that's not something that you would have taken. In fact, we are very close to beating a dollar Swissy long trade. Uh, dollar yen again, unconfirmed short signal and good. When they're unconfirmed, we don't take them as we can see. What it does tells us to not go and price pops back up, so that's good. Uh, let's see here. Aussie CAD, very similar to that other trade that I looked at the other day. Went long, price had a pretty big pullback to the primary baseline and popping up. Let's give this a few more days. Nothing to do right now. Uh, continuation long on the Aussie Swissy. And the dollar yuan still in this consolidation phase right here uh, again ATR is getting very low uh, whichever way this thing breaks out I do expect some pretty strong continuation when the dollar yuan breaks out so trade safely guys uh, that's me up uh, still up I mean uh, you know week week one and week two did really good week three so far the forex trading has been kind of like hit and miss so I'm pr pretty much just averaging around five percent up for the entire month so it's it's all right it's a good good stable addition And I think we'll finish up. We'll skip to traditional markets for today. And let's go look at uh, Ethereum. <sighs> let's go look at Ethereum. So held my short open uh, on Ethereum. Obviously, PTP signaling the Ethereum short back here on the 11th of July, 2019. Two days of consolidation and then dump, dump, dump. Uh, you know, a lot of people getting really excited to take price to the upside yesterday. And uh, it didn't happen, man. It didn't happen. Uh, chill, don't be. Thanks so much for subscribing over there on Twitch, my good friend. Pump up the jam, man. Thank you. Interestingly enough, did I say the right name? What showed up on my screen? Lefty on fire. Lefty on fire is what showed up on my stream. Thank you, man. Welcome to the community. Are we buying Bitcoin today? We are not. We are not. We are holding our short open. We are holding our short open. We are trend followers here. We follow the dominant trend. We will buy Bitcoin when the dominant trend has switched back to the upside. So, uh, I got my fidget spinner somewhere around here. Lunatic Fringe 56, thanks so much for the follow over there on Twitch, my good friend. Chilled on TV, rip. <laughs> Put some Forex keyword in the description or title. That's a good idea. Are you guys arguing about woke? I mean, I talked about, I guess, I guess this is, this is my fault because I started talking about anarcho-capitalism. I started talking about governments and now the conversation is socialism, truth, and wokeness. The modern pastimes of our era. Let's see if I can... Get over to this one. Uh, maybe, maybe something like um, 
We've been been spending spending most most of our lives in a socialistic socialistic paradise. paradise. All right, did that work? Cool, still figuring it out. Well, it is, it does, that's definitely my fault. Can I tell us quickly how to spread crack capital across exchanges and how to select trades to enter in the group to maximize profits? Let's take that one at a time, man. Uh, can I tell us quickly uh, I can, I mean, I can give you the TLDR. How should you spread capital across the exchange? So, so specifically in the group, um, you're probably looking at, well, Binance hasn't been generating a whole lot of profit lately because it's just not very profitable to trade on there, the style that we trade. So less capital on Binance, obviously, probably talking about 32, you know, anywhere from 25 to 30% of your capital on Binance sitting in Tether, most likely. Uh, and again, most of the capital right now should probably be on um, your leveraged exchanges because that's where the opportunity is. BitMEX, Bybit, Deribit. Uh, we're going to be, you know, Coinbase Pro, obviously sitting in USD, and then we'll be adding support for Kraken as well. So there'll be more opportunities, especially for United States traders to trade with us on margin as well. We'll be adding Kraken support at the end of this month. And I think that uh, Kraken's going to start seeing a lot more liquidity because of Binance shutting down. But I think that Binance US is going to see liquidity too. Justin is focused. <laughs> uh, where do I recommend starting when learning how to trade? I already have a decent understanding of basic patterns. Uh, I mean, I think the Kraken Cryptocurrency Discord is a great place, man. Uh, Discord.krakencryptocurrency.com. We've got a ton of traders in there. We've got some free analyst channels. We've got our technical analysis channel. We've got our trading chat. It's free for everybody. Everybody can join and just meet somebody in there that knows a little bit more than you and can actually start walking you through risk management. And you're going to meet guys in there. A lot of guys from the group hang out there and chat and talk. Uh, you know, my problem is, you know, the way that we trade is very different from the way that most people trade because the way that we trade is verifiable and mathematical and testable, and back testable. It's not, well, you know, based on this, that, and that, and the third and the cycle of the moon and you know, 19 different things over here, not to actually cast any shade on moon cycle traders, because I know that's very important to some people, right? So I definitely respect that. I respect the hustle. But for me, I mean, I'm just a stat nerd. So everything I do is testable, verifiable. I'm a trend follower. I'm not a reversal trader. You know, I just trade according to my strategy. Um, do I think this is just a non-ending cycle where whales take their profits and price drops, triggers everyone's sales orders and price drops even deeper, the whales buy? Uh, that's pretty much how the market works, man. Woke is what happens in the morning when I get out of bed. Uh, Boris Friedman says, what are my thoughts on the three day 21 EMA as a longer time frame baseline? It seems like it has held up more often than that back testing to the beginning of the year. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Kyle Mitchell, good to see you, brother. What's going on, man? Um, I think that uh, I think that I get the best trading signals on the daily time frame. But definitely, you guys know that I, I pop over to the weekly. The three day is also a very good time frame to look at when you're looking at longer term trends and levels of discretionary interest as well. I think that if it back tests well, it's probably very good. Hey, no problem, Jai. Good to see you, man. What do I think about using Renko to help confirm a trend is trending? Thanks for another great video. Uh, I think Renko is pretty awesome. Uh, I think that Renko, if you understand it really well, I got a, 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 a Ask Me Anything where I talk about Renko for about a half hour and I walk through how Renko is calculated, how one can use it, how one can write indicators around it. Um, I, I think that, that Renko applied incorrectly is bad. So for example, a lot of newer traders are going to look at Renko and, and start writing strategies in Renko but not calculate their Renko correctly, not calculate their bricks correctly. And for that reason, they're not gonna have a lot of success uh, because you you don't use you don't use ATR Renko to trade. So for example, when we switch over to, um, when we switch over to Renko right here, right? Uh, we have to understand that this by default is, actually, I think I have mine different. Yeah. So box sizes, adjustment methods, 
if you have this on, uh, this is not real Renko. You would have not seen this at any time. Uh, ATR Renko is always going to show Renko based on the current value of average true range. So uh, we need to be looking at Renko uh, traditional way. Um, so you always, if you're looking to set up a trading strategy, you need to select, whoa, hello, my lucky penny. You need to select traditional. Um, you need to select traditional and set your box size to something to experiment with. So let's, you know, like 10 bucks, you know what I mean? I think you're gonna get a lot of, a lot of bricks. And I don't think it's just as easy as buy on green and sell on red, right? I, I don't think it's that easy as well. And also understand that your Renko charts are going to work very well with indicators, but you're, you're just going to have to change everything, man. You're, you're going to be a, you know, pioneers, Brian. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I, I think I have a lot of, uh, I think Renko charts are really, really good. There, there is one thing to be said for, uh, so this is how you make sure that you're using traditional when you're back testing Renko charts. Uh, I've got some Renko strategies that I used to trade on, uh, Forex. I think they work really well. Um, now, uh, one thing is really, really good for ATR, right? This is, this is one really good use of ATR. If you are trading stocks, and there's going to be a big news event tomorrow. And you want to know whether you should hold long or whether you should open up a short or exit the market. Look at Renko on the ATR the day before the news event comes out and trade in that direction. Okay. Renko will tell you what's going to most likely have a high probability of success of coming out because Renko doesn't care about the news and it's far less sensitive than an OHLC candle, right? Of course, it, you know, so, um, or a bar or a Japanese candlestick. So <clears throat> similar with Bitcoin. If there's a big event coming out and you want to know whether to hold the long or stay in the short, just pull open Renko before you go to bed and whichever direction it's tilted in. Okay. This isn't hundred percent, but this works really, really good. This works pretty darn good. So, uh, this would have had you short. Four, uh, two days ago, you would have been short two days ago and you'd have been long since the 2nd of January. Okay. Now, of course, this is not going to be accurate because uh, the ATR value is going to be different. So, so actually what I said is not actually correct because this past history would have looked different at that time. Uh, but for right now, if you're wondering like which direction to trade in, I mean, the, the, the trade is to the downside. I don't know where all this moisture is coming from on my computers. Uh, do I still believe it's a bull market? Yes. Bitcoin will go lower, probably. Do I think the answer is technology and individualism? Yes. Because everybody dies alone, brother. Um, how about lower time frames? Well, I fail a lot because you jump into your long a bit late on the daily now. No, I just think that the lower time frame that you go down to, I think that you're gonna have great success trading. I traded on lower time frames for years. Okay, I still do. I again, I was down the beginning of July, and then it was meso time frame trades that put me back up in the green, and then obviously these shorts to the downside that have put me significantly in the green. But um, there's nothing wrong with lower time frame. You just have to adjust your strategy accordingly. You are gonna get into trades earlier, right? But your trades also probably aren't gonna last as long. The lower the time frame you go down the more signals you're going to get, the more signals to enter and the more signals to exit. Um, I don't think I am an all-out libertarian. I'm more pr pragmatic and in touch. I, I try to be. I try to remain humble to understand that I definitely don't have all the answers. I just know what my base values are and, you know, if something makes sense to me from a fundamental perspective, I tend to try to noodle it out logically and intellectually. But, you know, at the end of the day, human beings are going to have their own limitations and triumphs and abilities and things that they're really good at and things that they're not really good at. So I definitely don't have all the answers. I'm just on this. I'm on this journey of life with all of you. And I just try to come on the air every day and express my honest thoughts and opinions the exact same way that I do to my friends and family. I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to do well. I want everybody to crush it. 
but I've got my biases and neuroses and drawbacks and problems just like everybody else, man. Uh, Greg Seguin, it's in the, uh, shoot me a DM in the discord and I'll try and track it down for you. It's, it's in there, man. You got to look through the notes. How to select trades to take in the group to maximize profits. Well, I mean, you know, one of the key aspects of the group is that we teach you how to take your own trades. That's what we do. Uh, and then, you know, the trades are there. Well, so my trades are there for the most part as confirmation of the trades you should already be seeing because we're trading the same system. But you're also going to be trading. You're also going to be learning to develop your own system. But you learn how my system works when you walk in the door. Uh, and then our other analyst trades, some of our analysts focus on price actions. Some of our other analysts focus on lower time frames. So um, again, for, for me, the answer for me is always backtesting, right? You look for what are the triggers for a signal? right? What are the justifications for a trade? And if you've backtested those justifications to have a high probability of success, that gives you a greater confidence to take the trade. Is there a trick to move funds in Bybit? Nope. You got to put, if you, if you want to trade Ethereum, you got to put Ethereum on. If you want to trade Bitcoin, you got to put Bitcoin on. If you want to trade Ripple, you got to put Ripple on. They don't have coin swap yet, but they will. Uh, meso time frame means so so meso means like middle of the road. So higher time frames are going to be your daily, your three day, your weekly. Your meso time frames are going to be like your your uh, 12, 8, 6, and 4, 3 maybe. And then your lower time frames are going to be your one hour down to your one minute chart. All right, guys, you know what time it is. I got a whole lot to do today. So let's slide on over into the DMs, if you would. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin. Of course, I've been Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you want to support the stream, make sure to like, follow, share, subscribe, and engage in the comment section down below. If you guys would like to learn to trade how we trade, if you guys would like to receive mentorship from actual experts who know what they're doing, if you guys want to join a community that wants you to grow and succeed as much as we grow and succeed, you guys can join us over at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com or otherwise hop in the discord at discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com to meet traders who actually want to crush it. Um, if you guys love the show but often miss the live show and you wish that wouldn't happen, you can check out the podcast at breakingbitcoin.money. You can see all current and past show notes as well as links to all the podcast catchers. We are, of course, on iTunes, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, uh, uh, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify. We're all over the place. You can even add us manually via RSS feed to your favorite podcast catcher. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, and or death threats, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. I will try to respond to you within 48 hours. That's it, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Trade safely. Peace out.